Father in heaven, thank you once again for allowing us to be in the land of the living. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the great redeemer. <clears throat> Father, we ask a special blessing upon our colleague, Commissioner Joyce Bowman, as she undergo her trials and tribulations with cancer. Father, we also ask that your blessings come down upon everyone that is suffering debilitating diseases throughout uh, this parish, this state, and this nation, and this world. Father, we ask your blessings upon the troops as they serve throughout the United States as well as in foreign countries. Father, we ask your blessings upon our seniors. Father, we ask your blessings upon our veterans who've served. These and other blessings we ask in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn and face the flag and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'll get Do we have any uh, agenda additions? I don't see any. So, I mean, I, I will, but we can't do anything with it. Okay. Okay. Yay. Good. Say the date, Dominique. I don't think you say the date. You're about a hundred dollars. What? You can't talk the whole thing. One more. Then he's coming in. I just talked to okay. him. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Johnson's always waiting. I just uh, talked to him. I went with the court, had to work, you know. That's what I can leave it now. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, you couldn't just walk out of the courtroom? All right, citizens' comments. Citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and file it to the president or the clerk of the commission. Comments by any citizen will be limited to three minutes. I've got one card, and that's Ms. Lois Mayberry. If you would give us your name and address when you come to the microphone, please. Good afternoon, my name is Lois Mayberry, 137 Promenade Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana. Good afternoon and thank you for letting me share with you some thoughts on a medical ministry happening in Caddo Parish. I am the Chairman of the Board of Directors of St. Luke's Episcopal Mobile Medical Ministry, a nonprofit mobile medical clinic that provides medical screening and education to people in Caddo Parish. The clinic is a 36-foot recreational vehicle that has been converted into a mobile medical clinic. We travel to both rural sites like downtown Vivian, Oil City, and also inner city Shreveport at Austin and Texas Street, Cedar Grove, and the Highland neighborhood on at least a monthly basis to perform blood pressure and blood glucose screening. These are easy, inexpensive screening tests for high blood pressure and diabetes. The Center for Disease Control reports that high blood pressure is a major risk factor for heart disease, stroke, congestive heart failure, and kidney disease. In 2010, high blood pressure was projected to cost the United States $93.5 billion in health care services, medications, and missed days of work. Through screening such as those we perform, high blood pressure can be discovered and treated with most time inexpensive with most time inexpensive medications allowing individuals to lead productive lives and continue in the workforce. The American Diabetic Association reports that 7 million people are undiagnosed and living with diabetes. Just, just one minute, please. Could, uh, everyone, please take your seat and listen while the speaker's speaking, please. It makes it difficult to speak when people are moving around and talking. Thank you. Go ahead. In 2007, there were 71 million deaths attributed where diabetes was a contributing factor and cost Americans $174 billion health care dollars. Citizens of Caddo Parish that are underinsured or uninsured and live in areas where medical services on a sliding scale are difficult to obtain because of transportation problems are helped by attending our clinics that bring the health screening and health services to them. Currently, because of our limited services of only screening, we are not able to prescribe medications. We would like to expand these services by reaching more areas and providing more services, 
such as those of a nurse practitioner that could prescribe medication. We'd like to also expand our patient education services, having monthly talks with the clients about the problems of both high blood pressure and diabetes, which both respond to changes in diet and activity level. These treatments are inexpensive and easy for the client to participate in, but require motivation and good educational information to assist them with the commitment that is required. We have submitted a proposal asking for funding to assist us with expanding our services to other rural areas in Caddo Parish and expand our scope with additional education resources and the services. I'd like to close with a story. Last Sunday morning, we held our clinic in downtown, in our downtown location at Austin and Texas Street. A gentleman came. He knew about the ban and had seen it before but never used our services. He had been experiencing stomach pain and had visited a local emergency room. They had performed several tests and found that he did have a problem that was serious and he needed to stay for care. This gentleman was scared and did not want to stay. He was told he could leave, but that he needed to seek help. Where did this man come to gather more information about this difficult problem, our van? He came with questions and wanted to know what the doctors were telling him. The man was poor, had a limited education, and no family support. He's homeless. We sat down, spent time with him, respected him for being a child of God, and helped him through this difficult situation. We were parked near where he lived and cared enough to come to this neighborhood every month on the third Sunday to care for him and his friends for the past four years. He understood that he did need more care and is going to follow our suggestions of attending the appointments he needs to find out what is wrong, but that took some care and compassion and concern for his well-being. I have been in the healthcare industry as a physical therapist for 35 years, and I know that compassion is leading healthcare because of the demands of paperwork and patient numbers. The joy of St. Luke's is that that, that compassion is one of our best medicines. I hope you will favorably grant our request for additional funding to expand this program to meet the needs of more individuals who need health care service and compassion so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> I've got one person to ask you something, Mr. Wade. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I do understand the thank you for coming before us. Uh, let them know about the health care concerns of the citizens in Cattle Parish. I am familiar with health care. I used to own a physical therapy company. Oh. <laughs> I do understand the cuts. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I'm not in bed is because of the cuts. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, the former city councilman, Monty Wofford, part of your Yes, he is. His wife is the secretary of our board of directors. And Monty drives the van and parks it on Sunday morning once a month. Okay, and is the reason why you're... One of the reasons because is it state med is Medicaid fund is at all? Uh, no, this, this receives no state or government funding. Our current funding is only for, from donations. We have recently, um, last October, got 501c3 status. Hmm. So we are now beginning to look for grants. So what is your fund? Or how much fund do you? How much fund do you operate on now? <laughs> $45,000. You bring your executive director who knows the number. What is 5000 cover the entire cattle parish? Underserved, undersured? That's, that provides what we're currently operating. We currently operate one clinic a month in Vivian and Oil City, two clinics a month in downtown Shreveport, um, and then we do our outside Caddo Parish with a, a clinic in Minden and a clinic in Mansfield. And we have a clinic in Highland once a month and a clinic in Cedar Grove once a month. So if, 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 cattle, if we were able in the future to consider you favorably for the citizens of Cattle Parish, your priority yes. for the resources that we are funding for uninsured here? Mm -hmm. um, what we're hoping to do with additional funding, we could, we also currently, we have one 20 hour a week employee. That's the only employee we have. We would like to employ a nurse practitioner who would be able to consistently be there. We have a doctor who volunteers once a month, but only to one of our clinics do we have a doctor who comes. How long have how long your operation been in business? Five years. Five years. Um, 
Is there, is there a awareness, cattle awareness of your services? Because this is my first time. We are working on it. Um, awareness comes, I related before, I'd love to get some media coverage, but we have sent press releases. We've participated in, you know, events. The van's hard to miss. It's a 36-foot van. It's got a big sign that says St. Luke's on it, and people see the van. They don't always understand what it's for. We try to... Um, lock in one of our best and most successful ways to use the van is we partner with the northwest louisiana food bank and at their food distri distribution sites we park the van also because we know that is a drawing factor for clientele to come and but media is a different i mean exposure is a very difficult thing and i'd rather spend money on providing services than publicity or something like that if it's going to require money but it'd be, it would help if we were informed and the community was informed of the service because I know just in my district alone you say an underserved, underprivileged, uh, uninsured on the Lakeside Allendale all the way from North Holland to Shreve Island. I know in Stone Hill mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are poor. Right and uh, again that's where, that's where we're beginning to expand. When we did not have 501c3 status we were only you know only able to generate funds through donations yeah, I've foreseen you being a plan a major role with all the cuts in your state. Mm -hmm. And that's Especially what we're LSU, hoping also to be, that's what we have done some cuts. discussions with, mm -hmm. trying yeah. to be on the cutting edge of that. Um, we do have a close partnership with Martin Luther King Health Center. David so, Rain Community Center? David no, Martin. we have a partnership with David Rains, but the Martin Luther King Health Center, which is a free clinic, yeah. we partner with them so that if we've identified someone that needs continued ongoing care, we refer them there um, to b receive that ongoing care. We do refer individuals to David Rain Center, but that is a community health clinic. It is not free. Yeah. And so we explain to them the process of getting in, and we encourage them to use those centers also. Well, let me just say, uh, personally, I appreciate the void and the gap because people are thrown into poverty Mm -hmm. And no fault of their own. Exactly. They're just poor. And unfortunately, most people have a deaf eye to the cry of the poor. Mm -hmm. You just never know. I may end up needing this. Mm -hmm. You never know where you may be one day. So We've had some very very interesting individuals come through the band. So, so hopefully um, we have a lot of programs that come before us, and we have to make some real tough decisions up here. And hopefully we will consider uh, supporting your cause uh, I hope our colleagues will take a good look at this because our ounce of prevention will save the taxpayer exactly. a lot of money. Exactly. That's what I... We know um, there was a study done when the Martin Luther King Health Center first opened years ago, um, and an individual, they looked back, he had been hospitalized four times with congestive heart failure. Each hospitalization, and these are ballpark figures, were cost about $10,000. He was hospitalized because he could not consistently get his medication. The year following participating at the Martin Luther King Health Center where he was given his blood pressure medication, which costs $4 a month, he was not hospitalized at all. So for $48 in the following year, he saved the state $4,000, I mean, yeah, $40,000 because he was not hospitalized. So that's what our goal is, is our goal is compassionate health care, but in the long run, there is a huge cost ex cost savings. Well, I can see where you could be the, the, the difference between life and death mm -hmm. when it comes to diabetes and uh, high blood pressure, especially in the African American community. We know diabetes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, and those things affect a minority, affect everybody, mm -hmm. but especially minorities related to uh, the family roots uh, regarding mm -hmm. to that. So hopefully. We can consider this when that time comes up in the future. So uh, thank you for being the mother of Teresa of uh, Cattle Parish. <laughs> Not quite, but I do have a compassion for the people of Shreveport thank and Cattle Parish. Uh, thank you. Mr. Epson. Uh Ma'am? Yes. Uh, did I miss how much was your funding request for? $6,500. $6,500? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did I also hear you state that you uh, provide service in Minden and Mansfield? Yes, we do. But okay, that uh, Minden is Webster Parish, right. Mansfield, the Soda Parish. Are right. you requesting any funding from them? Not at this point. Okay. 
All right, that's good. Uh, see anything you request anything to the street board? Not a we haven't requested from the city of Shore. Okay, As but I say, you we do are, provide services, right? We are just now beginning to make our request for funding. Okay. Uh, what about any requests for any state funding? Not at this point. Okay. We have, we have requested some funding. Um, we have been granted a rotary grant, correct? A grant for the rotary. Um, we have requested and don't know the outcome of a grant through the Episcopal Church called the United Thank Offering. Um, Again, I can't emphasize enough. I have a 20 hour employee, everyone else is volunteer, and so we're slowly getting into the grant application process. That's all I have. Mr. Dominic. How often do y'all come to Oil City and Vivian? You say once a month? Once a month. The second, third Saturday, we partner with the food bank, and so we are in downtown Vivian at about 7.30 in the morning. On what days? Sunday? On the um, third Saturday. Where at? Where do y'all park at? Come up to the mic. <coughs> Come on up with us. Yeah, there's a building. It's, it's yeah, we, right we, we, on we. downtown. It's where the food bank distribution center is. Tell me, don't even know. Is it Rain or Love Food Pantry? Come up okay. to the mic. Do you being recorded? It's the Greater Love Food Pantry there, right there on uh, Highway in Pine Street. And then we go to Oil City. It's a Looking to Jesus ministry right there on okay. the main highway. And y'all are the, when you go to Vivian and Oil City, are you in Vivian one Saturday and then Oil City? No, we're, or they're the same Saturday. It's the third Saturday. So we go to Vivian from 7.30 to 9.30 and then Oil City from about 10 to noon. Okay, I just want to know. And it's the third Saturday? It's the third Saturday. Okay, yes. thank you. I'll be looking for my screen and I'll make sure I'm okay. Anytime you see a big van with a great big St. Luke sign, um, feel free to stop. That's the nice part. We ask a few demographic questions because we are participating through the um, National Mobile Health Network. We're participating in a, a uh, not a study, but a um, data collection service that Harvard, actually Harvard Medical School has put together and so we collect data just to look at our cost effectiveness and those kind of information. Mr. Smith, I didn't hear you mention Keithville or South Caddo, Ken, did you? And you are very correct and that is one of the areas, um, no, that is one of the areas that we would like to expand into. Is that in the contract? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I thought it was in the grant proposal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I don't have any more <coughs> citizens comments, visitors. Uh, Ms. Martha Merrick, Executive Director of the Food Bank of Northwest Louisiana. Good afternoon, Commissioners, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I know you all have a busy work schedule today, so I'm going to ask for about 10 minutes of your time, Max. Um, I did bring a video. I know that I've come before you, and and, um, and we have been very, um, y'all, the Commission has been very generous for us to receive grant funding in the past, and so we brought a little video. I know you're familiar with the food bank, but if you don't mind, we'd, I'd love to show you the, um, the video about the food bank. This was made at no cost to us. The Bossier Parish Community College provided this for us free of charge. And I'd love to share it with, with all of you. Louisiana sees the face of hunger every day. Partnered with over 100 nonprofit and faith based organizations, millions of pounds of food are distributed throughout Caddo, Bossier, Webster, Claiborne, Bienville, Red River, and DeSoto parishes. 
well. We serve um, anyone in Caddo Parish that meets uh, the guidelines on poverty. Uh, normally, every year we, we give out, distribute about 9,000 bags at least. Um, it, on our high months, we can give out as much, many as eight or 900 bags per month. We have 100 volunteers. And from not just from this church, from Noel, but from other denominations, other churches as well. We have some volunteers who come in from East Texas to help serve our community. We work together with the food bank uh, in order to help feed the hungry in our community. Uh, we believe that's something that we have to do. It's a non-negotiable uh, as, as Christians, but we also are very, very attuned to the needs of our community and working with others to meet those needs because um, you know, we've been so blessed and we have so many resources to share, and uh, we feel an obligation to really reach out to those in our community who may be going through tough times. Since 1997, the food bank has been providing hunger relief to those in need. Our energies and expertise, along with the support of private contributors and countless volunteers, have helped us wage a significant battle against hunger. I'm out of work right now. I was working at one time at Stonewall Hospital, and Recently, they just closed down this past March, and I've been out of work since March, and I'm drawing my food stamps, and also I come here to Noel Church to get commodities, because that's the only thing that helps me to keep me going, and they are a wonderful place to come, and I enjoy the surroundings, the people are very friendly, and I just really enjoy it, and they really helps me out and they do good work and they just good, good all around. It just ain't enough to describe. They just wonderful people. I'm a retired uh, tree climber. Uh, been climbing like for 35 years and right after the continuum, I got hurt in the tree, I fell out and I broke, you know, broke my kneecap in half and everything. So I just went into um, early retirement and I came over here by Noya, which has been really co cooperating with me and understanding uh, my problem, they you know why, because you know it's a crisis going on anyway, you know, you know in the United States too. Uh, but no, uh, the, uh, the church is here, this program, food program, you know, helping me out, you know, and God bless them. The Food Bank is a member of Feeding America, the nation's largest hunger relief organization. To be eligible for food and grocery items, one must fall within the poverty limit set by the federal government. Food is channeled through member agencies including food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, group homes, and other nonprofit organizations. The food bank also offers programs that provide for our hunger insecure children and seniors. <coughs> the Kids Cafe, the Backpack Program, and the Senior Program. The Kids Cafe is the nation's largest kids-only meal program. This innovative program is designed to help in nurturing America's future by providing free, hot, nutritious meals and tutoring to needy children in a safe, accessible environment. The backpack program meets the needs of hungry children at times when other sources may not be available, such as weekends and school holidays. The backpacks are filled with five to seven pounds of child-friendly, easy-to-prepare food. The senior program is in place to help supplement impoverished seniors' nutritional needs so they are not faced with the difficult decision of choosing between medicine, mm -hmm. rent, and food. It has meant a great deal, and to me and hundreds of senior citizens, the food bank makes the difference between independent, living independently and in a nursing home. Uh, it helps people from all walks of life. And I don't care how much money you've made at some time or another, you're going, you're going to need the help of great organization like this. It helps with the groceries because the groceries is so high. And I was getting food stamps, but I don't get food stamps anymore. And we do a lot of programs uh, here uh, that help feed the community. Um, that's one of our big things for our church is to support the community in that way. And um, we do lunch Monday through Friday for anybody that walks through the door. It's completely free. And um, we offer a community garden where we have a lot of vegetables that we grow um, in the spring and summer.
to supplement our meals here. We have backpack program. We support 53 students um, in Bossier Parish in the elementary schools. And um, we're just so thankful for the food bank because we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. Um, just the food and the meat and the produce that we receive and the support with all the other programs um, just it makes it all possible. And, um, and so we're just thankful for that. Without the help of the food bank, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. We have so many clients that come that needs the food. You know, they come, they might want a loaf of bread, they might want something to cook, you know, for that evening. But they come on a regular basis and they always thank Bernstein and the church for giving back to the community. But I stress to them that without the food bank, we wouldn't be able to do it. We will not be able to do it. How can you help? Just knowing the scope of hunger is the first step. You can make a financial donation, volunteer, host a food drive, become a sponsor for our largest fundraiser, the Empty Bowls Banquet, held yearly in June. Participate in our booth at the Shreveport Red River Revel Festival each fall. Or join us in our community campaign with the simple plan of giving $1 and one can of food to offer help and hope for families. Hunger in America is beyond charity. Hunger in America has no business existing. Say no to hunger, because hunger is everyone's business. Call the Food Bank of Northwest Louisiana or visit our website to learn more about our specific programs and opportunities. United, we can change the face of hunger. We focus on the 43,000 individuals that live below the poverty level, and these are the folks that come to our pantries throughout the parish to receive food. The Food Bank is the largest distributor of donated food, and we partner with other nonprofits to make this food accessible. And, you know, I'm here today to thank you for your past support, and I, um, we do have a grant submitted for this year, and we are very hopeful that the Cata Commission would be generous enough to consider funding um, the Food Bank in Northwest Louisiana. Um, today, I, I uh, provided each of you with our, um, our annual report, our last fiscal annual report, and our most recent newsletter. The month of September is Hunger Action Month, and so through Feeding America, they gave us some t-shirts, so I wanted to share those. Orange is the color of hunger, so share your orange with us, and also a, a shopping bag. We, if you go to the grocery, you can use that to help advertise the work we do. So we should do thank you. Do you have any questions? William? Um, Mrs. Merrick, recently yeah. I was at the grocery store just last week and was surprised I had two half full bags of groceries and they were fifty dollars what type of buying power does the food bank have that's a great question we have remarkable buying power for every dollar that's donated to us we can turn it into twelve dollars in value worth of food and a lot of that is because we have relationships with food donors that in turn will donate food to us where we are mainly paying for transportation costs so we can really um, multiply that dollar into a lot more food than an individual could just go into the grocery. Thank you. That's all, Mr. President. Hello, Nick. And uh, one question. <coughs> uh, the ladies with St. Luke, we're talking about the food bank in Vivian. Are y'all associated? Right. They get their food from us. Okay. And is that pretty Greater much? Love. Is mm -hmm. that pretty much what? Mm -hmm. we, we have about 120 organizations that receive food from us. Okay. A lot of them are shelters like the Rescue Mission, Providence House, Salvation Army, anybody who feeds the homeless. Then the other part of who we provide food to are churches like Greater Love in, in Vivian who take feeding the poor as part of their ministry. And they order food from us just like they would Conco or Cisco, but it's all free to them. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do do y'all get any uh, fresh food, bring any fresh food from uh, farmers? We do. We actually work with several farmers. We also pick up um, food that is very close to perishable from from retailers and wholesalers like Reinhardt, which used to be Conco. You know, a lot of times we call that short dated. If items are very close to expiring where a retailer won't take it to sell, there's no market for it. But because we have such a grassroots effort, we can receive that product one day and have it in a church, usually the very same day. So we do get a lot of donated fresh produce, meats, poultry. Um, we have refrigeration where we pretty much distribute it, anything. Not just food, we do like cleaning products too, because that's very expensive. Yeah. John? Uh, Mr. Uh, Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Most of the questions I want to ask, however, you do, you said you do a lot to help the, the poor, feeding. Now, do you run across family that are, that already been subsidized, have used up their food stamps, and be coming to you for, to intervene? Absolutely. You know, we see that all the time. We, we've done surveys in the past. We did our most recent one in 2009 where we found that food stamp or SNAP the food assistance generally only lasts two and a half weeks. So we get calls at the food bank for folks that are run out of food stamps or are waiting to be approved for the program. And, you know, we field anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 calls a month, people looking for food assistance. But generally, those come closer to the end of the month. But do you assist them? <coughs> Absolutely. They need, uh, assistant in filling out the, uh, the paperwork? Or do you direct them, or your referral agent that may direct them to some survey that may, here again, fill the gap and catch okay. them in the net, in the net. So in the future they can get some services down the road and we can help those they really 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 poor don't qualify for the program homeless veterans sleeping under the bridge people that fought for this country and they got to come america's not being fair to them so we need to find us veterans homeless or food bank to help our veterans right. make sure that our veterans the men and women that fought for this country have been able to not only free food but get a job that's Commissioner Efforts, and that's his field. He's an expert in that area. But I, I'm not concerned about everybody, but right. those men and women who've been out here fighting for our freedom. Absolutely. Make sure they eat uh, for anybody. Right. And the children, make sure they eat. And, and we do some children's programs, like our backpack program, where we go into schools where we know there are children that aren't getting food on the weekends. And we send food home on Friday. It's a gallon-sized baggie with child-friendly food so that those kids can have nutrition over the weekend so there's no gap there. So we do have programs specifically for certain age groups. We do a senior box program for senior citizens because we know they receive the least amount of benefits from the SNAP program. So we, we try and target those groups that need it the most. I appreciate it. I know what it's like to be subsidized. We with cheese and powdered eggs and powdered milk. And uh, those programs may help me get along with my journey in life. Sure. And um, it, it, unfortunately, I've been weaved off that because of those programs to help people like myself <coughs> and others just to be able to have a basic meal every day because here again, uh, we're lucky, we're fortunate here in the South, especially in Shreveport, Caddo, now with our new Moody Barn rating of triple, triple A, uh, we're doing some great things down here, but still there are those that have been caught up in the net. Right. And because of the economy, need help, real help. And I, your, 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 your money, this money is well spent in tax dollars money at work. Thank you. You can see the work when you see people benefiting from what we're putting back in the community. Thank so you. just, here again, you, you're doing a marvelous Christian uh, job in our community. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I invite you all to come to our facility if you haven't been to it to see the work that we do. We're at 2307 Texas here in Shreveport. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, what's the grant request that you're asking for? $100,000 for food, to purchase food. Okay, on the backpack program, um, could you give the administration the names of the schools that students participating mm -hmm. um, in Shreveport it's Wynwood, Westwood, Barrett, Cherokee Park, 
And there's more, and I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, and we'll sure. go back to your office. Okay, <laughs> and I'd be glad to email you. Yeah. a few areas. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's more, but I'm, I'm, those are going to come up first. Okay. Uh, third, my last question, I think, is uh, um, neighborhood organizations, uh, do they come to you for food for people in their neighborhood, specifically for people in their neighborhood? And if so, have they, have you, been able to grant them 100% of the time, <clears throat> or have you been able to, have, have you had to turn some of them around? Um, because we're a nonprofit, we partner only with nonprofits that have 501c3 right. status, so it wouldn't be a neighborhood group as much as it is a church. And um, so what we try and do is spread it out so that there's locations all across the area so people aren't having, clients aren't having to drive across town and using resources for gas money. So we want to get the food out close to people that are in need. Um, and, and we do not always are able to fill the requests. No, we're not. The, the need is bigger, the demand is bigger than the amount of food that we can secure. Mm -hmm. um, every year our food distribution continues to grow. We, we uh, surpass each year. Um, and we've, we've never been able to meet the demand. It's that big. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Let's you so much. It. Appreciate it. Yeah, I believe we have our representatives <coughs> from three of the banks uh, to have our money. And the first one I have is Capital One. Good afternoon, thanks for having us, um, and thanks for the opportunity to serve as your bank for the last three years. Uh, we've uh, really enjoyed it, appreciate your business, and uh, hopefully we can continue that relationship uh, moving forward. I'm Michael Bradford with uh, Capital One 333 Travis Street, uh, right down the street, uh, and I have with me Wendy Wall Majors, um, and I'll just jump right in and tell you a little bit about Capital One. We're the sixth largest bank in the country. Uh, we're strong, we're stable, we're well capitalized. Um, in March 2012, the Federal Reserve conducted a stress test on 19 of the largest financial institutions. We've uh, exceeded all benchmarks. Uh, we finished uh, fourth overall, uh, second among banks that engage in commercial and uh, consumer lending, and first among broadly diversified banks. Um, as far as local involvement uh, is concerned in, in uh, our uh, uh, effort in uh, serving all citizens of Caddo Parish, uh, we've received our uh, most recent CRA rating of outstanding. Uh, that is reflective of our commitment to uh, all households and uh, businesses around the parish. Um, to my knowledge, we're still the only uh, local bank with a dedicated community development officer uh, here in the Shreveport market. Uh, most of you know Lydia Jackson. She's been in that capacity for uh, 16 years, and she's asked me to uh, mention a few of the um, Initiative, initiatives that we're working on currently in Kettle Parish. Uh, the first is WINLA, W-I-N-L-A, which uh, stands for Workforce Innovations of Northwest Louisiana. Um, Capital One partners with other private investors, public sector, and community uh, leaders to promote economic vitality around Northwest Louisiana. Uh, and what we do is, uh, is uh, promote uh, employment training for those who are underemployed, underserved, or unemployed. Uh, 2012, Winlet uh, made grants of $100,000 each to Bossier Parish Community College and Southern University in Shreveport uh, to provide job training in energy and uh, the healthcare sectors. Uh, also, Capital One recently uh, established a nonprofit community, community development corporation for investing in affordable housing in low to moderate income neighborhoods. Um, that CDC provides. Uh, construction financing, uh, low interest loans to nonprofit uh, developers for uh, single family housing. Um, also recently we provided $20 million in financing for the Ogilvy Hardware affordable housing project, which is uh, right here in downtown Shreveport. And that'll be, uh, they'll provide 90 to 100 uh, affordable housing units right here in Caddo Parish. Um, on the education front, we partnered with uh, groups like Junior Achievement, uh, the Heart of America Foundation and New Beginning School Foundation uh, to establish education focused programming in schools 
and community centers around the state. Uh, here in Shreveport, uh, we have endowed professorships at uh, LSU Shreveport uh, and at Southern in Shreveport. Uh, and we also sponsor scholarships at both schools. Uh, in 2010, you probably remember that we opened up a brand new branch out by the campus at Southern University in Shreveport uh, to serve um, the employees of that campus in the MLK neighborhood. And then finally, we've introduced a program called EverFi, E-V-E-R-F-I, Financial Literacy in Caddo and Bossier Parish Middle School and High Schools. Uh, and we've also made it available uh, at Bipsy and Susla. And what that is is a, a financial literacy program where we promote personal finance skills, including budgeting and student loan uh, management. As far as our commitment to the parish goes, um, we would like to continue to provide a, a highly cost-effective uh, fee structure, which I think the parish is um, probably happy with. Uh, and we'll also include a three-year pricing commitment, which means uh, we won't come back and increase prices uh, at the end of one year or two years. Uh, and if you decided to exercise a one-year option at the end of the second year, uh, the pricing guarantee will stay in place. So whatever fees you're paying now is what you'll continue to pay for the next three years uh, should we uh, earn your business again. Also, um, on the service side, we've uh, made some efforts to uh, increase the value of the services rendered to the parish. Uh, one of which we moved the relationship management role from Dallas uh, back to Shreveport, uh, which means rather than your um, relationship manager being 180 miles away, we're right down the street, uh, less than 180 steps away. Um, and also we have a, a new, uh, when he's going to talk about a new um, dedicated client service team. So with that, I'll uh, turn things over to Wendy. Hi. Um, we've been serving the parish now for the last two years, um, since, t yeah, almost three years, yes. And um, it's really been a great relationship. I know we've had to hit some bumps in the road as we've continued to grow as a bank and as you guys continue to grow as well with the different projects that you have in place. Um, some of the things that we've done to kind of step up our servicing um, <laughs> commitments to the parish as well as to to other um, clients is you know our goal is to create the um, exceptional customer client experience and so we work really hard now to track all service requests whether they're big or small whether it's a check copy that you need or if there's a deposit that hasn't posted correctly we um, we've built the infrastructure to track these things so that we can kind of find out where the error occurs and how to eliminate that from happening. We also have established some service level agreements with our internal and external partners um, just so that we can say we will have this resolved by X day and we're able to stand by that commitment because our internal partners that help us resolve these issues are on board with us as well and can help us meet those service um, expectations. Another um, focus that we've done is put out client surveys. A lot of our clients will be receiving surveys so that we can figure out how we better service our clients. Um, and this is everything from in the branch to over the phone and just from the sales side as well as the service side. Um, we also implemented a sundown rule so that if the parish is having um, a concern with a deposit that's missing or um, a, you know, a check copy or something, we'll get back to them by the end of the business day. And then we've also um, have a well-defined es escalation process. I don't think that that's something that we've had in the past, but we have really looked at our servicing across the board to determine how do we become more effective. And these are some of the things that we've implemented to streamline our service and our uh, disruption to our clients. Uh, and if y'all have any questions sp specifically, I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> Hey, I don't see any speakers. Me, I've got a question. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, uh, I want to commend Capital One Banking uh, it's a Company for a great presentation. Um, it's probably one of the best presentations I heard since I've been down here. And to see a young African American male actually make the presentation makes me even feel even better and a, and a lady. Uh, Michael, you did a good job. Thank you, sir. They taught you something in the financial institute, huh? I've been around a long time. <laughs> you know that. Uh, me and Michael go way back. There was a commercial <laughs> shooting here about years ago when I first got elected, and they called <laughs> me for a commercial, and they said they were going to pay, pay me $25,000 for the commercial. I thought they was kidding. 
So you know who got the contract? <coughs> this guy here. Oh, you have to be a little more handsome than you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> put him out there. Kid, I thought it was a kid. I said, you got to be a kid. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, good to see you, Michael. Um, the many the things you asked about the investment you give in affordable housing, the interest, the Community Reinvestment Act, uh, the relationship with Southern University, Sussler, and uh, also the LSU. Um, and I just couldn't, this question I wanted to ask you, I already asked him. Right. But my thing, how many employees you have and how many are minority in okay. key management position? Okay. <clears throat> um, as far as the branch, the branches go, we've yeah. got 164 employees in uh, Cattle Parish. Uh, I wrote down, uh, I anticipated that question. I wrote down a uh, number of uh, women. We've got 155 female employees. 33 of which are in management. Uh, we've got 68 minorities in the brand. Now, this is just the branch system. 13 which are in managerial roles. Uh, that does, does not include business banking and commercial, bank, I mean, uh, commercial banking. Uh, I represent commercial and government banking group. We have six employees in Shreveport. Of those six, we've got two women and we've got two uh, in managerial roles. Myself, I'm the senior vice president and we have Mr. Angela Walker, who is an assistant vice president. And of course, in our uh, community development group, we've got Lydia Jackson, uh, who is a vice president. I, I did hear you say you, you're locked in those rates for three years? Yes. Uh, here again, I just, you know, you guys made a great presentation. Yes, sir. Um, and look forward to hopefully <coughs> work with you in the future. And they get another commercial, Mike, you know, you know you're- I'm gonna call you this you next call time. call me. Okay, you'll be. Right. Thank you. What's up? Well, are we talking about the Toyota commercial? Mm -hmm. Saturn. Oh, Saturn. Saturn. That's right. Well, guess what, Michael? I was one fourth as handsome as he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was chosen. I got 25% of that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> my family, my daughter, my wife, and my son. You got a portion of that too. Not just like staying on that. <laughs> I thought it was April Fool. <laughs> it was for real. Oh, Lord. That's all. Right. So you've already taken care of two of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't have any more speakers. We appreciate your presentation. All right, thank you. <laughs> Our next is Gray P. Boyd and Chase Point. Good afternoon. My name is Russ Nolan. I'm a government banker with J.P. Morgan Chase, and uh, we office at 400 Texas Street, right across the street. Appreciate the opportunity to come to you today to visit and give you a little bit of background and information. Uh, I think in the RFP it was specific that you wanted some information regarding our community investment and CRA. That's what the primary focus is. But I will comment that we have presented a competitive bid. We think it's very competitive, Chase is a strong financial institution uh, recognized internationally. We do enjoy an A-plus rating with uh, Standard & Poor's. And we think, uh, we think our specialty with governments, we have a line of business that specializes with uh, government, not-for-profit, and healthcare agencies, and put a lot of focus and expertise so that we think we can bring uh, new ideas and solutions to the table to help you be more efficient in what you do as you operate your banking business. Uh, I think I'd like to uh, start with referring to page two on the uh, handout. And this will cover uh, uh, mortgage and small business lending that we do here in uh, Cano Parish. Since 2009, Chase has originated over 1,800 mortgages for $287 million in Cano Parish. 26.5% of those are to low to moderate income buyers, and 8% of those loans were properties located in low to moderate income neighborhoods. Chase also operates a home preservation office, which is really a, a concept that started after 2008 in the mortgage crisis to, to try to assist homeowners to stay out of bankruptcy, stay out of foreclosure, and regain their credit uh, standing and stay in their homes. It's been uh, very successful throughout the country, and there are call centers which uh, any, any mortgage holder of Chase or, or one that we service can call uh, virtually 24-7 and, and gain assistance with their mortgage. Uh, again, since 2009, Chase has made 1,300 small business loans totaling $81 million in the parish. 
and 24% of those loans have been in low to moderate income areas. Page two is a, a overview of our community development lending, just hitting a couple of the high points. Uh, we funded 30, $39.1 million in qualified school construction bonds for the Kenna Parish School Board, one in 2009 for $17 million and one in uh, two, 2011 for $21.8. Those were uh, uh, under the American Recovery and Investment Act, and those bonds were used for uh, construction, refurbishing, and revitalizing uh, schools in Caddo Parish. In 2011, we provided a $1 million term loan to the Caddo Community Action Agency, and uh, that provided a variety of services to low to moderate income families in the parish. Page four covers uh, community investments. And that, that is really summarized in grants or contributions that we've made in this community. We've had over $450,000 worth since 2009, 287,000 of which are CRA eligible. Just to mention a few of those, uh, the $30,000 grant to the Community Foundation was primarily for workforce development to uh, try to assist those that are underemployed or unemployed with, uh, with job opportunities. In 2011, we provided a $30,000 grant to the United Way of Northwest Louisiana, and that was a program that uh, provided uh, tax assistance uh, to low to moderate income families for uh, uh, credit education, for closure counseling, uh, helping to build savings for emergencies and uh, tax assistance. Uh, in 2011 as well, too, we had a $20,000 grant to the Volunteers of America for the Lighthouse Program. And if, I think you're all aware that the Lighthouse Program is um, a, a project that's designed to overcome, uh, help families overcome poverty, illiteracy, and joblessness. We uh, had a $50,000 grant to the uh, Regional Arts Council to uh, assist with our resource center right here in downtown Shreveport. In 2010, we had a $5 million grant to action it's a micro lending organization in Texas and Louisiana that really generates small business loans to try to generate economic development within communities. And the local Shreveport office since 2010 has funded 22 loans for $438,000. And final comment was that J.P. Morgan has uh, provided $100,000 for the uh, National Center on Community Progress in Louisiana to develop uh, uh, best practices for remedi remediating blighted properties. Uh, every city, major city in Louisiana, has an issue with blighted properties. So that would impact uh, the, the Shreveport and Caddo Parish community to some degree as well, too. These are just a few examples to illustrate the depth and breadth of what, uh, what we're trying to do to assist the, uh, the parish and the citizens of Caddo Parish. We, uh, Certainly appreciate the opportunity to come for you today and really sincerely appreciate the opportunity to ask for your business and earn your business. And I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. I have so much speakers, but I have one question. I, I'd like to ask you to both, both groups. Um, you know, all the programs that you both listed are wonderful, but as a person who is partly responsible for the money of the Cal Parish tax, uh, taxpayers, my question is, are you making a profit? Yes. Is that without the government money? Has the, all the government money been paid back? Yes. I mean, I, I know we don't know where the government money went. We do know it went to the banks, but we don't know how much went to who. Yeah. Our, to whom. Uh, so my, my, my interest is, I want you to make a profit, because you know, if you don't make a profit, it will be an empty building while you are over there. And we'll have our money sit there, and we won't be, we won't be getting any services. So it's important that uh, you're a profitable organization. We absolutely are. And Chase, through the whole financial crisis, uh, maintained its profitability and credit rating throughout the whole uh, uh, meltdown in 2008 and through today. Uh, very proud of that fact. Here locally, we look at it holistically. If you looked at all the money that we've donated in the last three or four years or, or made contribution to our community, I couldn't just say that's that's all for the benefit of uh, Cattle Parish Commission. We have literally tens of thousands of customers individually 
government entities, private businesses. So it all is kind of grouped together to support the community for the benefit of the all. All right. Thank you. Uh, to uh, Captain Warner, I'd like to ask you the same question. Yes, sir. You are profitable? Yes, sir. Y'all pay back your government, the taxpayers' loans? If you want to be around, we'll be pick up the phone to call you. Okay, uh, anybody from Regents Bank? We've got two sisters, man. All right. Two ladies. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for your time as well. Uh, my name is Tara Deal. I'm with Regions Bank. I've been with the bank for about 20 years. One thing I do want to ask, though, I handle our treasury management for Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Um, I do not have a whole lot of facts like the folks that have gone before us as far as um, our involvement, uh, involvement with the community as it pertains to CRA, et cetera, but I'll be more than happy to follow up. I really wanted to talk a little bit, y'all, about the service side. Um, I've been fortunate enough, again, to be with the Regions for 20 years. I've been able to work with Erica. Of course, we were the incumbent bank prior to the last RFP, which we were very disappointed to lose, but uh, just wanted to, to, to let you guys know that from the service side, um, Maggie has been with me, Donald, for 10 years, and we're heavily in the public fund sector. Uh, we have several clients that, that, bank public, that, that are on the public fund side, and um, we offer a full gamut of the treasury services, et cetera. And one of my hot buttons is always customer service and like to take care of the clients, et cetera. So um, I just kind of wanted to come at it from that angle and, again, be more than happy to get back with you on any facts or answer, answer any questions as it pertains to regions. Uh, we were one of the last to repay TARP, but we All have right. done so. Uh, we need to return to profitability over the last two quarters. Um, our thank goodness for our CEO has really turned the company around. We have gone through some difficult times. Um, however, we, we feel like we're back on the track uh, for, as far as profitability, profitability and safety and soundness. Um, and again, having been an employee for 20 years, I've kind of gone through five different name changes, et cetera, but uh, feel real comfortable um, about delivering the service and feel confident to, to let our clients know that we are a good place to, to park their money and, and, and earn interest and, and uh, we can provide again a full range of, of banking services. Did you say you were local or are you out of town? No sir, I'm local. local. Maggie and I both are downtown um, at Texas Street, yes sir. Okay. And we do handle, we don't have, um, we are the service department as well, so when a customer has any issues, they call us directly. Um, again, I'm a stickler about taking care of my client within the same day. Uh, we do have support from our, um, from our corporate office, which is based obviously in Birmingham. Um, a lot of things we do run through, we have backup at, as far as that's concerned, and, um, but, but we again take care of our clients here locally. All right, we've got a couple of speakers. Mr. Epson? Uh, Mr. President, I, all three of the institutions, are they, are we getting a fee for us using the money? I didn't hear that mentioned. I thought well, I had seen something hard. somewhere. Yeah. They, we got it. Erica? Yes. Erica. Uh, are, we getting a, uh, are we getting any kind of fee or something? Or? We're paying a fee. Well, they're charging a fee, and then we're earning interest on our uh, bank balances. Okay. And so the analysis I provided to you all showed what the fees. Okay. What, what page is that? I, I missed that. If you book. don't have it, I have it with me. I, I you, know I got an email from you. Okay. Yeah, Erica, can you resend that to us or yeah. and bring it to us and have it here for Thursday when we don't have it in our packet? We got an email the other day. Yeah, and I wish there was I didn't bring it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll make sure okay. you have it before you decide on Thursday. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, in that in that uh, detail that we gave, we show what the fees are adjusted by the amount of interest that we would earn above. Um, we use a, a fair funds rate of 0.25. And we adjusted it for anything above that, and we adjusted it for anything below that rate. Um, most of the banks are, two of the banks are given a percentage above, and one is given a percentage below. So that's reflected in your um, analysis. Okay. But um, I have it if you want to see it now. I have it here. Oh. 
Mr. Lamb? Thank you. Um, ladies, you said that when Erica has an issue that you two are the ones that Erica calls and she has your direct line and you take care of her as you did three years ago, I should say. Yes, sir. So, and had done so for several years prior to that until okay. we lost the business. That's all, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I was going to ask Erica the question, is it appropriate to, to, to see who is charging the lowest fee and who is giving us the best interest rate? Um, Commissioner, based on our analysis, Capital One is uh, has the lowest uh, with fees and adjustment for interest. Uh, Regions has the second and then J.P. Morgan Chase. Thank you. All right, I don't have any other speakers. We appreciate your coming thank down you. to give us a presentation. <laughs> All right, thank you. Todd? Uh, I believe we might want to go back up to the agenda edition since we did not have a quorum at that first time. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lynn? Oh, thank you. Um, for the last three to four months, John Escadate and I have been working with the Metropolitan Planning Commission and the City Council of, of Shreveport in regard to a resolution that you should have on your desk. And this reflects what um, Commissioner Baker um, has brought up in regard to the funding of the, the Unified Development Code and what uh, President Thibodeau brought up as well. And so this is just to introduce this to the commission. Um, and this locks us in at 25% where before it was at 50%. And so this is to, to obligate us to pay 25% of, of that unified development code. And that's what I'd like to bring up. This put, right you got to extend the agenda to put that on the agenda. I'd like to yeah, extend, got to to it, to send to, right. to extend the agenda. Yes. And then that we'll vote on it later. Motion by Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Williams. And I believe we need seven votes. That we need unanimous. We need everybody. Yep. Unanimous. That's that right. On addition, yeah. Okay. Got one question. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. The twenty-five thousand has that already been allocated? Already? It's, it's twenty-five thousand and twenty-five percent. And has it already been allocated? No, sir. We're holding that money until this is passed. And I mean, we we missed the deadline for Todd. Um, to be on to be on the printed agenda by one day just by getting tied up in some stuff and so if it i mean it, i guess it could wait but there's really no reason to wait okay. money is set aside the money is set aside though waiting yeah. we didn't spend as much money on the master plan as we thought on the uh master plan the, on the master plan so we have i think what is it over a hundred thousand dollars twenty one thousand dollars left from the, uh, yeah. okay. the master plan and expenditure. And this does require that they give us itemized bills and then we'll pay per bill. I think that's how we saved on the master plan. In point of information, this is to, to move to expand the agenda. Correct. Yes. yes. Before we vote on it, we need to at least open it up for that's public correct. comments. All right. Now or? Before, now. We, yeah. before they vote to expand the agenda under RS-42-9, need to allow public comment on that at that time. Oh, I read 42-9, look at it. Do we have anyone in favor of the <laughs> ordinance? Resolution. Resolution. Is it a resolution? It's to expand yeah, the agenda. Yes, sir. Expand the agenda. Oh. It's to expand the agenda, not the particular. It's, it's to expand the agenda to, to allow what would resolution. be resolution 42. All right, does anyone uh, object to expanding the uh, agenda? Anyone in favor of expanding the agenda? See none, the public hearing is closed. Cast your vote, please. And it's unanimous, so it's, we have Expanded the agenda. Now that we need to vote to put this on, we it. need to vote to move it to the agenda. Yes. All right. A motion by Mr. Lynn. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Williams to put it on the agenda. Cast your vote, please. That passes. Three, six, eight, zero. Oh. And, and we'll add it at the end of our 
All right, new business. Okay. Okay, we have administration report. Yes, sir. Uh, President Thibodeau, just a few reminders to you, commissioners. Uh, this Friday, we have the budget retreat. It will be at 9 o'clock over at the Swift Co. Business Center. We'll try to make as painless as possible. We didn't need to go over the budget, uh, preliminary things for the budget. Uh, the second item is a reminder for the State Police Jury Association Region 4 meeting is set for September 26 at 6 to 8 at the Municipal Auditorium. I uh, just want to also make you aware that Mr. Kirk Foreman, who was the uh, LEPD, the North Louisiana Economic Partnership has left. The last day was last Friday. And uh, they're doing a job search for a new director. And, uh, the organization helps us out a lot, so they will continue to work with us. And we'll know as soon as they make the announcement on who the new director is. I think they have a short list already. Uh, also, uh, Commissioner David Cox called me today and requested that we have Ms. Ali Estafa and the director of the Water Streetport Water Department attend our Thursday meeting to give an update on the Shreve Industrial Park water line situation. There are some issues with them connecting to the existing line. So he asked, as a matter of records, did I say that before you today? And we will make sure that happens on Thursday. All right. And that concludes my report. Just a brief reminder that uh, we have a press conference Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. All right. Uh, we have any communiques or committee reports? Me, Mr. Chairman. I've got Mr. Williams. I'm going to say, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman and administration, I hope when you do press conferences, a lot of us are not retired. I still work. Mr. Uh, Johnson still work. A few others still work. However, we can't come to those meetings when you have an appointment at these uh, press conferences at 9, 30, and 10, 30 in the day. We hope you'd be considerate of all of us because some of us still work. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not retired yet. I'm looking to get there. Don't get me wrong. But I can't make those meetings when you have it at 9, 30, and 10, 30. That's, that's not fair to me because I don't like to be at some of those events. But unfortunately, Let's try to poll people and see where they had and be considerate to those that do work. And, uh, because I can't make those kind of meetings. That's, you know, I'm commending you on the job you're doing and what has happened. The historical day that's happened down here. But, uh, you know, I, I would like to be a part of that. But unfortunately, the times you come up with, I, I can't. Secondly, uh, I want to talk about a particular subject that I talked about when I first came down here. It's, a, it's about the violence down in, in the entertainment district in, in, in Shreveport, particularly the little club called Coco Pellets. Uh, one of the fundamental responsibilities of the government is to protect the health and welfare of its citizens. And in return for the taxes that they pay, we should protect them. Unfortunately, this doesn't fall in the jurisdiction of the parish, but I do represent downtown Shreveport. Um, a young, young man was recently beaten by another young man. Unfortunately, he died. He died in the proximity of the club that's been having problems over the years. And particularly, I believe, the law enforcement has been sleeping on the job. There's been, there been police brutality, there's been beatings, there's been killings, and nobody is doing nothing in law enforcement to shut this place down. The people that, enter, that go downtown to have fun and want to feel safe don't feel safe when they get near that particular place. It hurts the business in, in downtown Shreveport. It hurts the advertising and marketing. I don't know why downtown development, downtown is not doing anything concerning this here. This place need to be shut, D-O-W-N, down. I don't know why we can't get law enforcement to do their job. Our children are being killed, slaughtered down there. And who don't make no sense? Continue to allow people got to die in order to get some attention. My phone been blown off the hook. There will be a, a meeting at Praise Temple today, I think at 7, I've been asked to come. But I don't want to be always coming to meetings at the expense of young black males dying. Now, we should stop all crime, black on black crime, any type of crime in our community. But when this continues to exist at the proximity of the Coco Pelly Club, it's time for a new direction for that facility. It's time for it to go. I don't know who we got to work with. Commissioner Epperson, Commissioner Bowman, who we got to work with to get this place shut down because too many lives are being lost, too many people being beat for no reason, too many people being profiled for no reason. 
I know what it's like. I've been there. I've helped my son. They got me. But I had on a suit. So it's unfair and it's an injustice. And the quality of life is hurting downtown. And the image of Shreveport, the first thing people, I ain't coming down there because of that cocoa pit. We're concerned about having a good perception, a good image about Cattle Parrot and Shreveport and downtown Shreveport. That black eye down there is not going to help our image. Our public relations campaign to promote downtown is not going to be good long as that place stay open and existing. So whoever law enforcement is, whether it's the sheriff, whether it's the city of Shreveport, police department, need to go in, vice or somebody need to go in and do something about what's going on down there. Now everybody like acting like they blind, like they got on blind, like they don't see what's going on, or they don't hear. I don't know what's going on, but it needs to be changed. We have to bring in the Justice Department, the State Department, the FBI, they need to be checked down. I don't know who to channel this energy to, but I hope that we can get somebody down here. It may not be, it's in the city of Shreveport. The city of Shreveport is in Cattle Parish, in the state of Louisiana. There's got to be some jurisdiction, some sovereignty where we can step in and intervene and have a Project Thor, have somebody go down there and, and we need to pray, but we need to go in and make sure we do something to prevent any more deaths occurring downtown near in the proximity of the Cocoa Palace. Thank you. Okay, uh, next speaker is Mr. Dominic, just myself. Um, had a couple of things. Is uh, Mr. Dewisha here? Yes. Yes, sir, he is. Hey, uh, James, um, those, I appreciate those letters that you sent me. Um, I had a couple of issues on uh, the Spring Lake Mobile Home subdivision. Um, and you sent those out. I appreciate that. But they're actually, you know, they're Commissioner um, Lyndon Johnson's um, warm area. So maybe send him a copy of the letters that I've got. Um, uh, Commissioner Johnson had a report of some overgrown weeds and grass. So I just turned it over to Mr. Ben I appreciate and, uh, that. Anyway, but if you could, you know, send him copies so he will be up to date on what's going on. I appreciate it, okay? No um, just want to let y'all know that the I'm sure y'all got the email that there was a dedication the other day that I, I missed. The Caddo Community Action Agency, the Roy Hopkins Head Start Center has now been opened. It was named after Todd's father there in Oil City. It's a, a wonderful looking building. It's going to do great things for our area. Um, Mr. Gidry's has been here. We were a major financial contributor to make that happen. So. Uh, he sends his thanks, and I would like to thank the Cattle Parish Commission for everything we've done to, to get that started. And then uh, there's, I guess just to Mr. Grubb, uh, I've been working with Donna concerning a business in my area that has some tires, and it's, um, I guess, getting to be not only a safety concern, but the mosquito concerns, and we talked to Everett. The only thing we were going to really could do is, is spray. Uh, she was trying to give me a number for the Department of Health and Hospitals. I just don't want any number. I need some number to contact because apparently, according to her, they all have some jurisdiction over this issue. So I need a number from the DHH, someone that we can talk to to see what they can get done. You will have it by mid-morning tomorrow. I appreciate it. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple things I want to do. I did want to also bring up the issue about the violence downtown. I mean, uh, Liz Swain, the executive director, comes to us all the time about downtown development, and sometimes uh, all money is not good money. And if they cannot control the the atmosphere and the violence that goes on downtown, how do they expect us to actually grow downtown and to grow the parish? bring in jobs that people need, good paying jobs, manufacturing jobs, and not just service and retail jobs. You have to be able to have a, a atmosphere in which people will come to help the tourism dollars that we also look for so that we won't have to raise taxes in the parish, we won't have to raise taxes in the city. That's all I'm talking about on the balance part. After the, um, the government affairs lady came down from Comcast, I got additional calls, got some more emails. Um, there's much bigger problem than I had even imagined. I mean, it covers from one end of the parish to the other end of the parish. Um, would, I would ask if you would uh, give her 
uh, write her a letter or give her a call and tell her we need a timeline on when all those upgrades will be complete that they say that they need to do. And also, I think we probably need to explore, um, since this is not a, an exclusive uh, <coughs> franchise deal, any other type of um, cable service that might want to come in to do business with Cattle Pairs. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Jefferson? Uh, I, too, had a concern with Comcast. Uh, if it's appropriate, Mr. Wilson, if you would uh, <coughs> add in that letter uh, I thought the issue was settled with our new with our new franchise agreement, and I understand that it's basically stalemated, and the ball's in Comcast court since I think a certain period of time, uh, based on my conversation with Miss Frazier. Uh, if it's appropriate, I would uh, would like for you to add in that letter. That it's not our intention of uh, renewing or extending that agreement until such time we can get a definitive timeline as to when these problems that we've been having for quite some time with customer service and the quality of service that our constituents and our customers in Cattle Parish are receiving from that organization. And I, too, would agree with uh, Mr. Johnson that also we can, in the meantime, see if we can explore some other uh, cable entities that may be interested in possibly uh, bidding on this particular contract and let them know that we aren't satisfied with what we're getting now. So that was my issue relative to the Comcast situation. Uh, the next item I had on Saturday, I was... Uh, invited to ribbon cutting of the uh, a new United States Army Reserve Center in Bossier City, 1420 Swan Lake Road, state-of-the-art facility, $13 million investment by the uh, Department of Defense and the United States Army. It's a part of the 81st Regional Support Command, which encompasses several states and it makes this the largest of a control of over 44,000 soldiers in Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Puerto Rico. Uh, also, upon my visit there, I've run into several persons that have come from other areas within the United States and liked our area, and they have, uh, three of which had purchased homes. and living in Caddo Parish and two that was in Bossier Parish. So I think that's quite an economic uh, uh, shot in the arm for this region, Shreveport as well as Bossier. Uh, Mayor Lowe Walker was there also. And uh, it's a nice facility and I think it's going to really get us a lot of uh, exposure from that many people that will be coming here to get training at that particular facility. That's all. Mr. Lynn. Not being one to ever want to shut down a business, I feel obligated to tell a, a story that, that involves the, the business that Commissioner Williams has brought up. Um, just recently, in, in the last 30 days, a, a friend of mine up from New Orleans was driving past Coca Belly's, and a woman came out from in front of the bar and put herself in a position to where she would get sideswiped by his automobile. She fell on the ground. As soon as he got out of the car, a man robbed him, and the woman was already up and running, and the guy took off, and there were no police anywhere to assist him. And so I, I will bring it up that it is, a, it is a corner that I would address, and he promised that he would stay in the safety of New Orleans and not come back, and, and, I, and I won't ever drive that corner at night. That's all, Mr. President. All right. Well, kind of under the chair, I just want to go ahead. The Comcast, uh, Comcast issue. Uh, at our last commission meeting, uh, echo some of the things that my colleague said regarding uh, creating a uh, fair market bidding process uh, because we we have not agreed in the past to have any exclusivity for. Uh, Comcast by commissioner 
Captain has said. He complains of ongoing and ongoing and ongoing and ongoing like the ever ready battery. And it's not going to stop. Uh, they came down with a lot of lip service, but we haven't heard any really results or any follow up since the meeting. And the only reason why they came is because we asked. We requested them to come. And nobody should have a monopoly of anything. That's one of the reasons why we're probably getting treated the way we do here in Kettle County. But if you open it up like they're saying, like let everybody participate and come up with something that's fair and equitable for all citizens, even for our senior citizens. They have a program for the children, but they have none for the senior citizens or slide as he fell because people are on a fixed income. And uh, I don't know what is the time frame on that. I don't know if we have one. Um, do we have a committee that's working on that at right now? I don't know. We can do it in about five minutes. Okay. Go right on. Ms. Bowman. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I really wasn't going to say anything because I plan on saying something about something else a little later on the agenda. But um, in reference to Commissioner Williams' comment about the business downtown, um, several years ago, I was um, the chairman of the Public Safety Committee. We dealt with uh, that particular business as well as other bars downtown. And of course, Chief Whitehorn um, um, was very instrumental in curbing a lot of this. At one point, city marshals were inside, and they were causing more problems than mm -hmm. the folks <laughs> outside, so we basically stopped that. Uh, then it seemed, even after we adopted Chief Whitehorn's 56-point plan, and you had officers who were basically supposed to patrol outside, even on horseback, but uh, from my understanding, I'm not hearing of any of that anymore, you know, in that particular location. Um, my personal comment is um, got to look at the fact that maybe some of the police might be afraid to go over there. You know what I mean? You have uh, Commissioner Williams since, you know, you mentioned also black on black crime. You have a black mayor. You have a black police chief and you have a black city marshal. Your council person for that area is African American. You have uh, even yourself there. It seems to me that y'all, I don't know how to tell you to go about fixing it, but something is wrong uh, when there's no control. I mean, look at the fact also, was that last night? Mm -hmm. They robbed the police. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I mean, they took his gun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're out of control. You also look at the fact that yes. we've had, I don't know how many record home invasions. That really concerns me, and you know, in the words of Dr. King, he once said that an eye for an eye makes everybody blind. Mama. But that was during a different time. If people are going to think that they can kick in your door, force their way into your house, mob you, then I suggest this time that citizens take their own weapons out and be ready for them when they do come in. I mean, you can't live like this and let folks just... If they are able to knock your door down, they're able to go and get a job and get some money on their own without having to rob and steal and kill. And I think most people who have been involved in these home invasions have lost their lives except for that one lady. Um, uh, with her two kids. I think that was on Cade Street. Yeah. I, I I think that they're getting totally out of control. Coco Pellies everywhere you go almost because it's like they want to put fear into the citizens and um, I suggest to the citizens at this point you don't have to take it. 
That's right. That's it's right. time for them to get their weapons and shoot back. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. All right. Well, Miss Bowen, you're getting well. I am. I feel pretty good today. I'm glad you're back. Today is a good day. Yeah, <laughs> you're definitely getting well. <laughs> right on time, Miss Bowen. That's right. Say you go dress cupcake. I'll, I'll just want to suggest, yeah. <clears throat> I saw a sign the other day out in the uh, <clears throat> rural area, and it might be a good idea to attach it on your house. It says, due to the price of uh, a ammunition going up so high, there will be no warning shots. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be something you have to throw in your front door. <laughs> Maybe, right? um, so what, I, what I'd like to do is, is um, appoint a committee to uh, to deal just with this Com Comcast and put get everything down as to what you know what really are our options right. who is it other than the parish that has any type of control over them right. and as far as what we do and then make some decisions on what we really want to do and what was it what is it that we can do because I don't know that everybody knows that right now uh, Mr. Olson I was going to ask you to Chair that, but it, uh, I, if you want to say no, I understand because you've got a lot of stuff going on with the veterans. Yes, sir. I'd, I'd like to finish the veterans thing. <laughs> All right. First. Yes. Then, Mr. Johnson, would you mind chairing that and uh, uh, go ahead and choose your members? I, I know Mr. Epperson's, I, I know everybody's interested, so whoever uh, you want to choose to put on the committee, go ahead and let's try to get a meeting as soon as possible. And uh, Let's just see exactly where we stand so that we can take the right kind of action. Okay. Thank you. The old business. <laughs> we move to new business. Authorized the introduction of ordinance number 5236 of 2012, amending the budget investment revenues and expenditures for capital outlay fund, public works fund, riverboat fund, solid waste fund, Detention Facilities Fund and Capital Improvement Fund to terminate complete or lapsed capital projects for year 2012. Moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Williams. Who second that? No, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I, have, I have Mr. Dominic. I was going to move to Globo. I was going to do the same. So. Remaining items of new business, including the resolution, if I can do that, that was, that was added on under new business to Thursday. I, I have one under um, 03 um, ordinance 5237. Yeah. If you can exclude that one. All right. Exclude those okay. So Second. Okay. okay. All right. We have a <clears throat> in Globe for 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and for the resolution that was added to the agenda and to move to Thursday and the physical. And authorize uh, the fiscal, not the bank. Okay, and fiscal agent to move to Thursday. Cast your vote, please. And that did include the add-on? Yes. Yes, okay. that included right. the add-on. Okay, and that passes 8-0. Uh, I heard about that. And authorize the introduction of ordinance number 5237 of 2012 to amend the Cattle Parish Code of Ordinance to enact Section 2-30, authorizing commissioners and their dependents to participate in the parish group insurance. Move for Thursday, Mr. Chair. Second. All right. Have a <coughs> motion by Mr. Epperson. Do you want to speak? Uh, I think Ms. Goldman won. All right, Ms. Goldman, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Let me get the record straight. I do support this 100%. If you can recall, a few weeks before my illness, um, we had committee discussions in, in reference to this, and that's partially what I wanted to mention today. This is not being done, and I certainly want everybody to know it, because of me. It was already being uh, discussed. Right. Yes. Um, unfortunately, for me, I think it's a little too little too late. Um, I spoke with Mr. Grubb a few weeks ago, and of course, in my particular case, almost like in my particular case with the other pre-existing uh, condition, I would have to wait 365 days before I would be able to 
participate in in in, in, uh, in this. And um, don't get me wrong, I hope it benefits anybody who who wants to use it that's on this commission. Um, my sadly, you know, years ago when we mentioned trying to buy into insurance with the parish, we were told we could not do that, that it was basically a benefit and anything that, you know, the parish paid for, then uh, we could not um, uh, be a part of. So uh, then apparently if we did the 100%, which is now, then you have that, that particular uh, option. If we had, of course, listened to my physicians on July 24th, I was given a matter of weeks to live. I'm still here by the grace of God. Amen. But it's just the idea that I don't think this will work this time for me as well as my other um, option, 365 days. In my opinion, me paying that amount, then trying to pay for uh, my medical portion or medications and all, this is not going to benefit me um, I, waiting a year from now to, uh, I mean, actually be paying into it for that whole year. And then, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that it doesn't benefit me at this point. So, um, but I will support it, and, and I think it's, it's good for, uh, for everyone else that's willing to participate. And Ms. Bowen is correct. Uh, should this pass, it's important to note that all expenses, uh, that this, should any commissioner choose to, uh, if this were passed, choose to participate, they would be paying 100% of the, of the premium. So uh, no commissioner would be getting anything above and beyond what anyone else is getting. Mm -hmm. Would be paying all of it. Mr. Epperson. Oh. I certainly hope by the grace of God, as he, um, as Ms. Bowman stated, relative to her diagnosis on July the 24th, and we still glad that she's here today, but who knows, she, uh, we think with God's help she'll be here if that kick in, and if she so chooses to participate in the process. However, let's, you know, we'll go back further to the 90s, you know, we had yeah. tried to get this in, and Right. You know, people were hollering that it was a benefit, it was a perk, you know. It's not the idea that just, I got an email today. Uh, one of my constituents uh, had spinal surgery. Uh, he had killed, he, he killed three water moccasins and two copperheads and stated that the parish was supposed to have been cleaning his uh, the ditches out. For some reason, they hadn't gotten around to it. So, you know, I... I went up there, you know what I mean? So it's not the idea of perks, but it's the idea if you really do your job, you are doing things that jeopardize your health, safety, and well-being as a commissioner, the same as an employee. Amen. You're driving over a road, you could have an accident going to check on the constituent. So it's not the idea of, of uh, you're looking for a perk. My only reservation about this had we not looked at this with an open mind when we should have years ago, it's a possibility that this help would have been needed where it should rightfully be needed. So I, I'm in support of it, and I know that this isn't in place because of Mrs. Bowman. This is something that should have been in place years ago. And I applaud this body for being open-minded at this point in time to make this a reality, and I hope that it will certainly pass. And uh, are we including life insurance, too? Because some of the places I've been in, too, I don't know. Like I tell everybody, you run your district the way that you want to run. I've been in the, I've walked into places where they had dope on the table, guns, and everything. That's my responsibility. The, uh, 
Commissioner, the answer to your question is the way the order is drawn up, it would include the life insurance benefits because it's part and parcel of the group medical the way it's operated. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Cash your vote. I want to extend. All right, Mr. Williams. I mean, thank you, Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Bowman. As you said years ago, this was an attempt. But we do live in the 21st century now. And unfortunately, we don't do business as you. We do it a little differently up here in Cattle. I mean, some of the things you said, some of the risks we take as commissioners, oftentimes the public don't recognize sometimes we are in harm's way. I know I put my life on the line for a lot of things. You're fighting crime and drug dealing and gang members and violence. People call your house and threaten you. Right, Ms. Bowman? Yeah. They'll call your house and threaten you. We put it all on the front because we love our district. We love this community. And we want to serve. It's a pleasure to serve in public office. But there is risk when you publicly, openly go out and fight people that want to play on the community. So I just want to say that I'm glad in the 21st century it's not a perk because you have to pay 100 percent. That's 100 percent you have to pay. Ain't nothing perky about that. You're doing the pay. There's no advantages to to pay. There's no benefits in terms of you serving. You get the same thing an employee has. Pay 100 percent. So as a as a note, sure you don't want people to pay only because what happened in the past with our colleagues. This is the reason why we need to kill that myth. That's not why. Because we have a change of vision, a change of direction on how we see things. And as a matter of fact, there's a process in how we conduct ourselves up here now. So I just want to kind of pad the pad the support a little bit and let you know that I will be supporting this in the future. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Please. I pass it right to you. Except for the agenda. Just to note, we will not have to sit as a tax board of review on Thursday. It has all been settled. We will not. Motion to move for adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. Yeah, it will be the whole thing. <laughs> right.